what kind of hangar or what kind of lab is this? Did we get that question really? Yeah, what kind of hangout is this? This is a bogus <laughs> hangout. <laughs> a bogus, bogus hangout. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a double bogus. I can't hear any. Oh, wait. I see. <laughs> That's better. It's you by now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, well, this is certainly as bogus as we ever get. Have we opened up the <laughs> just eat for people? If we haven't, how do we do so? I just got uh, the okay. ISP guy out the door. He just finished hooking up my TVs and my uh, internet, and my cable, and got it done by noon. But cool. wasn't sure whether or not everything worked or not. I can hear you all though, so that's a good sign. That, that's good. That's good. Yeah. We're, we're all here. We've all got sound. Uh, yeah, I know. Having, I got to thinking. I was like having fun with the like, crazy hands. Like wondering if like Bill's like guy is late or or woman installer lady is late. Like, what are we gonna do then? <laughs> <laughs> but. Ah, I think, I think we made it. it. Someone jump in. <laughs> so Someone be brave and jump in. Anyone can jump in. We'll we'll play hot seat. You know, jump in when you got something to say. Yeah. Jump out when I'm, you haven't. Let somebody else I'm, in. Um, I'm I'm you saw, it. I don't think you guys saw this, but I'm gonna paste it in. I feel like we're like kids on Christmas morning, like when all the kids are scrambling around for and nothing makes uh, any sense. <laughs> Yahoo! Oh, I, just I, think the, guys. And, um, <laughs> I think Kristen is like a kid on Christmas morning. Indeed. I think the rest of us are going, I'll be for a hangout. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need to explain to a few people um, that we brought over here. Uh, poor Fabrizio. Like, he's like, what are the two hand things? Those are props. And that's like saying, yeah, ha ha, this is funny. Look at them, or or you know, or you, good job. I agree, <laughs> something like that. It's a way of expressing how much you enjoy the, the performance. Yeah. And the Mark, performance. Mark, yeah. Mark, yeah. it just sounds really weird. If you call them feels, it sounds like you're creepy. Especially yeah. when you use both hands. Yes, especially when you use both hands and you're putting them on almond. It's like really creepy. Yeah, yeah. I'm putting both my hands on almond. <laughs> so, funny. so our first time collectively on, on blab although i think all of us have done at least one at some point um how how did the rest of you find the format compared to to agis i mean i i don't like the split screen i like it It's got an American yeah, yeah, game show feel to whatever it. Whatever the, uh, the, the US name for that show is. Yeah. It, I like yeah. being able to see everyone and not have to go like this and then like pretend like I'm not like that. Because <laughs> I'm never good at it anyways. I'm just like that anyways. And then like the audience never gets my eyes. So since we're having a blab about blab, which is what 50% of all blabs are about. Um, I know. <laughs> No, I think the difference is seriously that, you know, there isn't that 30 second lag time. It makes all the difference in having an engaging audience. It's not like you have people up on the stage that have to run to the microphone in the middle of, you know, the aisle in order to make a comment to the people up on stage. Like here, it's actually more in real time, which is, yeah. I find it more engaging as an audience, but as a participant too. You know, it's not like just the talking kids up on the stage yeah. far away. But yeah, we. I was trying to jump out. Yeah, we've got to get Trapagan on here because you know he's I'm the main out. blab can... apologist, isn't he? So, come on in, Mark. <laughs> well, I. Will... Oh, we we frozen Bill. I was trying to, to deviate from yeah. blabbing about blab. I did post a link to a Yahoo software that they. Uh, uh, produced. They don't crawl the web anymore. 
We're not, uh, Bill, we're not sure what you're Bing talking about because you froze for, for a few minutes. And I'm not sure if Bing's some... continuing to do that. Sorry. I think he's talking about the Venture Beat article he posted, maybe. There's a link to a Venture Beat article. Give me a chance. I in I'll the post chat. it again. Keep talking, and then I'll, I'll, put, to gloat I'll that put it I'm in again. Kutcher first. I mean, that's more important than a Venture Beat. <laughs> Definitely. You, you, you've always got to do that. And, uh, I am done. So what what, what is it you <laughs> love about Blab? Obviously, the fact that the chat happens at the same time as an engagement thing between, you know, the participants and the audience generally, yeah, I, I you know, I get it 100%. As a conversational medium, it's great where my problem is is that i don't think it's very good as a video medium yeah they definitely put the emphasis on huh. the conversation you know i think we've said that that all along it, it remains to be seen if they'll improve yeah. the video at some point but i think they've uh, i think they've consciously sacrificed some of that uh quality that some media producers might want in favor of simplifying and encouraging the conversation so that you know ammon already or excuse me uh, uh David already made the point about uh, the engagement, as you said, but it's also discoverability. Uh, you know, the fact that it's, uh, you start a show here and uh, people are just looking for stuff to watch. So you're going to always get new people coming in. Uh, you don't have that. You know, they never got that to work with Hangouts and Google Plus. There was never that, you know, instant discoverability that there is here. Um, so, yeah, and it's so easy to meet new people too. Oh yeah, like where we don't really. Am I frozen now? No. Yes. Nope. Okay. Your video is you found it. <laughs> no. You just go ahead and. We might. We might wish it was. <laughs> so that's that's the other part for me, and the fact that you're streaming four videos backwards and forwards. I, I don't know. You know, I don't know. Yeah, is, Zara, is that the uh, sometimes freezes? I'm sorry. Yeah, Zara makes a good point in the in the chat there too that uh, the the live discoverability is great, but they still have a long way to go in terms of things like, you know, Bill was commenting about how bad the search is um, and the, you know, scheduling blabs, the notifications don't always go out right. Uh, now I've noticed recently that you know, I, I have notifications turned on Chrome. So I get a little pop up in the corner when somebody I follow goes live on a blab or schedules one. I click on that, and more than half the time, it doesn't. It just goes to the homepage. It doesn't go to the blab. So they've they've got a lot of technicalities that they're working out, and that's you know why they still call it beta, as everybody points out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and I I do like the conversation format. Yeah. I still prefer it. Periscope. You know what? But I don't see it. I tried this. On, We're lagging. Sorry, I didn't mean to speak over you. I just We're it's lagging. Um, you know, I'm the I'm the odd out guest <laughs> here. So if anybody else wants to come in, just let us know in the chat, and I'll you can you can do. Oh, I figured I would be rotating out too because you. you know people are here to see well, the you're, headliners. You're an, essential, <laughs> you're an essential element, Kristen. Oh, thank you. I only have to stay because I've got the Christmas tree and none of the rest of you have. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> it kind of looks like snow, maybe. If I, move, if I move my laptop about 15 feet that way, um, I would have a Christmas tree too, and it would be a real one, but we won't, we won't yeah, do that. Yeah, could have, would have, should have. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, can I plug something before we go here? Sure. Yes, please do. Uh, I'll put in the chat here today. We we put out a new study, Stone Temple study today. Yeah. Um, this bill you shared it earlier. Thank you for doing that. Um, this is what we've been working on for a while. It's uh, backlinks. It's looking at the backlink tools, the major mm -hmm. backlink tools. So you know, Moz Open Site Explorer, uh, Majestic, and Ahrefs, and how many links do they actually find? Uh, we found them to be pretty much all the same. Majestic came a little ahead, but not to any great significance. And we found that it makes a difference to use all three together. Uh, yeah. You can get up, up as high as 80% of the links, uh, at least from well, higher authorities. Any so. one tool, Majestic came top with 60%. Right. And you've been quite generous. I mean, these were all notable domains uh, that were linking out. So, you know, these are the ones you would expect 
them to have focused on or for domain authority generally to have right we tried we tried to make it as easy for them as possible <laughs> Uh, and when, it's only when you went to the sort of really ultra high domain authority sites that you know it jumped significantly. Eighty yeah. percent was it? Eighty percent when you when you brought all three in, right? Uh, we also saw we did a little bit. We didn't look as much at lower authority links, but or lower excuse me, uh, lower domain authority sites links from those sites. But uh, when we did, you know, anecdotally, it does appear that they don't show up as much. And Rand Fishkin uh, popped in in a discussion and said, you know, said, yeah, we definitely we prioritize the highest authority links. Uh, we think Google does too. So um, it's not because somebody in Twitter had said to Rand, you know, well, this shows that uh, Open Site Explorer is probably not a good tool for discovering links for uh, penalties and things like that, which are going to come from low authority sites. And Rand said. Yeah, we didn't design it to be that. Um, it so, worried me a little that their, their tool was the only one that dropped off over time. Everybody right. else is picked up. And, you know, it, the open site. Which Explorer, one? I'm sorry. You know, the, it was a downward graph in open site frozen. Explorer, whereas everybody else had a sort of upward trend. Yeah, and that, part of that is, yeah, well, I'll say that here. We didn't, you know, we didn't go into great detail um, in the study on this, as we know. Uh, again, our intention here was not to hurt any of these tools. We, we love and respect them all. We think they're good tools. Um, but Open Site Explorer has been going through, Moz has been going through some yeah. um, some real headaches in the last several months. Uh, they, they had some, some glitches. They found some programming bugs that uh, they've largely corrected now, and the, the index is refreshing. It's going to take several months to get it all back together and get them back up to peak. But yeah. they've had... They've had some rough few months. Yeah, exactly. So that's part it, of what it does there. make me think that Open Site Explorer would mm -hmm. have scored higher if it hadn't been for that dip, and the dip was caused by uh, a problem that's now been resolved. We did see it starting to come back up. Yeah, and we did communicate. I just want to note that we were in communication with people from all three tools um, in the preparation of the study. We told them what we were finding ahead of time. We came... Uh, they all thought it was fair, uh, and that's especially magnanimous of, of Rand and the people at Moz because they know they've had this problem. Uh, they're very transparent about it, but they still think that it's it's fair. It's, they still think it puts them in a reasonably good light, and they they agree that all three of these major tools are about the same on the on the whole. But they don't show; they're never going to show exactly the same thing. So, you know, again. If you can afford it, using all three of them together, and then at uh, at Stone Temple we have a proprietary in-house tool we call our Backlink Profiler that brings in more data as well, uh, obviously from Google Console, um, all kinds of things, and our, and some of our own metrics that we mix in to try to maximize yeah. uh, what we discover for our clients. And if you can do that, that's probably the best. Yeah, way. I do think that um, one of the things that we should probably point out for some of our audience that not everyone is, a, is an SEO, is, you know, why it's so important to know about backlinks. And most of the time, a representative sample is going to be all you really need. Um, it, it's nice to have sort of exact numbers, but exact numbers when? Now? Um, you know, because those it's always a snapshot. You don't know how many links have, you know, now gone into the sixth, page deep of uh, you know blog pages uh, you don't know um, which of those sites have added so much new content that that link's really not being crawled because the page it, it's on isn't being called anymore it's been buried by pressure content but as a general idea of who's linking yeah. to you and in what context uh, studying your backlinks is very important because it's a good way of seeing how other media, how other websites and webmasters are reacting to what you created. Are they linking to it? How are they describing it? Um, you know, is it positive or negative? Those kind of things. Counting your backlinks to try and work out your page rank, no, you shouldn't bother. Yeah, definitely. You're not, not going to find a one-to-one -one correspondence there. Um, and the, you, you did a great job there, Emma, in explaining, you know, the, the many, many variables that come into play. This is a thing that, that anybody who's out there is kind of new to SEO. It's a good thing for you to hear when you hear somebody like Emma say that because um, you see people make a lot of assumptions out there that are based on, on very simple pictures that they take or simple metrics they look at. And in reality, it's always much more complicated than we know 
or we can see we, we do know we do know a lot of the complications there's more complications we don't know but you mentioned things like there's a lot just having a link is great but it is not the end and all and be all it's you know a lot of things determine how much strength is that link really sending to your site if any uh, you know, how much is it lasting in power over time? All those things that you mentioned are good, yeah. good questions. I'm going to put good up this to question here. We're, we're kind of touching on this already, but let's just make sure we've, we've mm -hmm. nailed all the points. How much does focusing on backlinks provide you with valuable intelligence and ROI things that you can actually improve yourself? And one of the things we're saying here, it, it's only a snapshot. You're never going to measure everything, um, but it's a very good idea of who's linking to you in what context, and whether it's positive, negative, are they picking up all the things that they could be picking up about your product or your article? Um, is some of the point escaping them? You know, that kind of thing is invaluable for knowing what you need to strengthen in the article itself uh, and who it is appealing to, who is sharing your stuff. You know, is, is, the, is the audience mm -hmm. of webmasters that's mm -hmm. picking it up and retweeting actually where you wanted to reach are their audience the people you wanted to reach if not why are they focusing on it and not the people that you wanted to to, to pick up on it so that's my take mark yeah go ahead bill if you if you spend some time going to a place like uh, uh google search console you can get an idea of backlinks to your site that are recent that Google knows about that you have a good sense that Google knows about. Uh, you know, when I look at things like a domain authority, I have to remind myself what that number actually means mm -hmm. because it's not page rank. It's uh, more like the an IBM uh, block level domain authority score that IBM came up with. Uh, it's supposed to be a way to relatively gauge between the power of two different domains uh, what the value of a link might be from one of those. And that's supposed to give uh, you as a webmaster a sense of what that number analysis. means. And I always describe it as sort of like proxy voting. Um, you know, this person links to you, but how many people link to them? How important are they? How much influence do they have? And when you look at who's linking to them, who's behind those. So it's kind of a, a very big circular way of, of going around it. And the way PageRank used to be calculated mm -hmm. uh, was the, these recursive. Uh -huh. And of course, the question is whether or not we really are getting the benefits of PageRank from Google anymore. Are they still using it? We don't know. It is named after one of the founders of the I, company. So I don't, it's just, possible. Just don't know I still how do it. use it. it, it is anyway. form alone anywhere anymore. But I think it underpins several other things. And where I do think it is still very largely used is in crawl priority. Hmm. And that's why I posted the link to the Yahoo Antheon paper, because that gets rid of page rank completely. Uh, they focus upon prioritizing sites that have more structured data, and they get more uh, data as a result from the crawls using it. Then again, they open sourced it, so Yahoo isn't necessarily the ones using it, but it is worth reading. It's an intelligently written paper yeah. that makes a lot of uh, good points about what we might see yeah. in the future. He's noticed a lot of older links appearing in Webmaster Tools. Uh, could this be related to the recent Panda crawl, which was apparently very deep? It could, but it could also be a lot of other things as well. Um, there isn't enough information there to make a conclusion there's just enough reason <laughs> to start looking at what might uh, have been the, the issue um and wasn't there something uh tying in with with structured data and amp uh that was announced this past week no one? there have been new uh uh schema Associated with uh, I know about articles, that one. That's different, but go that ahead. That, that's Google's a good one. published. 
Yeah, that, that so supposedly really, has to do with the amp. So I know um, we noticed, yeah. for example, that uh, I saw this yesterday that they're now requiring author as a field for uh, for article structured data, right? And you say that's yeah, but you know that that's tied Brand that's tied to AMP. For people that are listening and don't know, um, AMP is a new program announced by Google that will be uh, rolling in sometime in February of next year that accelerates content, sort of similar to what Facebook has been doing, where they, where they have partnerships with certain publishers, major publishers, where Facebook can take their content and present it instantly, so you don't have to wait for it to load like a web browser would. Um, and this is a way that Google has for publishers to structure their content in a way that Google can take it and then, you know, present it very quickly, especially on mobile. That was actually for, the number uh, one thing that John Mueller was saying um, is probably going to be like, you know, what they're going to be talking about um, in 2016 is AMP, the, the Google yeah, Webmasters. That um, that's Rusty Brick's, uh, or rather Barry Schwartz's article where he picked up uh, six points that John mm -hmm. had pulled up in uh, one of the webmaster hangouts recently. Uh, that, you know, AMP is going to be more important than structured data is going to be more important. If you read anybody's predictions for 2016, you'll find that structured data I'm is being... going to be more important. We all know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I've got to go. I'm being called away, but uh, great to see you guys. Great to talk with you, and a, and a very happy holiday to everyone. If I don't, thanks so much for popping in. Uh, now and then. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Okay, so what joke are you going to make? And about you know me disappearing. I'm ready. <laughs> uh, David says that you know it's it's one thing to be structuring the content nicely, but it's, it's another for Google to actually start using it. I think they do use quite a lot already. I mean, let's face it, Snippet are here to stay. We all know that they're quite important. Lots of people are complaining about Snippet. Oh, yeah, giving answers that are, you know, blocking people coming to my, my pages. Well, if all they wanted was the answer to that, they probably weren't the greatest of customers anyway. If they want more info, they're still going to come through. Um, but if that satisfied them and they're going to leave, you're kind of better without them because that would have been a 10 second visit, which is going to look like a bounce in anybody's statistics. Yeah. So David says, uh, but pulling out the entire article, uh, that's no different than screen scraping. This is one of the, the big things. We, we did a hangout with Google a little while ago and it's tough when you're trying to balance customer needs against, um, you know, the fact users don't want to do more clicks than they have to, and Google's trying to answer more questions on itself. But yes, I think they've still got some more balancing to do. It's not like Google are not trying to monetize those answers themselves. Um, you, you don't see, oh, if we've got a knowledge box, we won't show ads because, you know, Obviously, they only want the answer. We shouldn't monetize this. We shouldn't steal this traffic from other people who might want to monetize this with advertising. If they believe it's valuable to advertising, then they shouldn't be taking that away from people. Bill, your keyboard has got louder than ever. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Please feel free to jump in, guys. Like this is totally fun and educational, the whole edutainment thing. So, if you have a page filled with thirty products, forty products, one of them is more important than the others. You cannot use schema to identify that one that's the most important one on the page, uh, which allows you to prioritize and takes away some of the uh, screen scraping familiarity or similarity to it We're because always you saying are that, you know, giving more additional information more than, than you otherwise User would. intent is key. That kind of goes against it. Oh, this is the one I think is most important. Do you know what the most important product is on that page? The one the user wants, the one the user's interested in, not the one you think's got the most markup or the one that you think has the best margins but the one they're interested in. So I, I don't know. 
Yes, but the youth. But, but as an author, you have to have some intent behind what you write, and there's nothing wrong with being able to specify what that is. Now the audience isn't. I think it's, the it's audience nice isn't that always right, up, and sometimes they're wrong. I don't think that's going to be one that's going to be important overall. It's a bit like meta descriptions and meta keywords in the old days. The language that webmasters use to describe their stuff isn't the language that users use to describe their stuff. You know, um, the webmaster is, oh, the best, the cheapest, the greatest, regardless of what actually was in the SERP. Uh, the user has just done that search. If you're the cheapest, they're going to know it. You're not. You, If you say you're the cheapest, that means you are confident that between you publishing that and a user doing a search, nobody lowered their price and beat you. That's a really big assumption. Um, you know, the user... If you're, if you're writing a page about a specific yeah. topic, though, and you're trying to focus upon that specific topic, but you're including other, other information, you want to make yeah. sure the that search engine that knows this page is about is this. It's kind of like the Amazon or eBay page where you... It's a single product that you're showing, but you've also got suggested products. Now, those you'd want to show, these are less important. This is the product for this page. This is what all of the text on this page is about. These are just other products that we happen to think are related in some way. Yeah. That's a useful way of doing it. Yeah, and they're, they're extending some of the schema, so they're going to be able to give you... Uh, more options and ways that you yeah. can describe the um, and data that you're I think showing. is going to become quite a complex language because uh, unfortunately lots of people are asking for lots more things. It, it's almost going to, I, th I think it could become a bigger vocabulary than HTML itself. Huh. It's possible. It really is. Uh, <laughs> Now, uh, APIs, the same one, type of thing. One from David, I've, I've got to pull this one up. Um, a client has written an article about the top nude beaches in the world uh, for search and traffic purposes. Would he be better off including uh, non porn? Uh, um, Non-porn photos or not. Non-nude photos. Yeah. So. Better off than what? Should he have safe ones that can pass through safe filters? Yes. Yes. I'd say that, you know, a nude is big. You don't have to show full frontals of anybody. Uh, you don't need the, the shots to, you know, if I see somebody gracefully from the back, uh, not at all, uh, you know, an erotic or, or whatever shot. That's still going to show me it's a, it's a nude beach. Mm. <laughs> I, I, you know, we don't need the uh, the cheesecake aspect to it. And aren't there usually signs on the beach somewhere? Nude beach. <laughs> I've never seen a closed beach yet, and unless it's got <laughs> a lot of seaweed on it. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, I definitely think it's worth having the non um, iffy, the, the safe stuff, the stuff that's going to get through safe searches so that you can mark it up as, as safe. Because if you're starting to show erotic content, you need to start marking up um, that it's not safe for work, that it's not safe for children. There is a term that, um, that Ifat Cohen went searching for and she had has her safe search on however um because it was a term that you know it has alternate spellings and google is used to seeing this this word associated with other things it was i guess it was um looked at as more of a, a knowledge um search query um and so it, it brought up this image and and she like had her son right there next to her. And so, <laughs> you know, like kind of like caught her off guard. And um, and so she made a post about it. I, I wanted to ask you guys um, 
what you think about that because safe search is something that you know is definitely important to me as well i wouldn't say you know safe search is ever safe it's safer than not um there's lots of applications that, that go on top of that you know the net mm -hmm. nanny type applications i don't trust those 100 percent either um ultimately if your children are not you know if you don't if you want to know what they're looking at and have control then you need to know what they're looking at and have control you can't rely on software to do that for you um ways of doing that is you know don't let them have a computer in their bedroom have it in a public room, you know, a room that the rest of the house use because that will control what they're doing nothing that they don't want you to do occasionally glimpsing over their shoulders um definitely think about you know putting uh filters on at the modem level a lot of modems today enable you to put uh filters on at that level so that oh the wow devices will not connect up to social media sites after a set time or they won't connect to any violent hate speech type sites uh, that have been marked up it will protect you from a lot of things no gambling for instance or if, you, if you've got very young children and they're using tablets and you're worried about maybe them accidentally making purchases, you can stop them making purchases. You can block uh, any kind of shopping sites with some of those. So do have a look at some of the modems that are out there now because a lot of those have controls, parental controls built in to the modem. Um, when I went to BYU, we used, we, like they use CougarNet. And so I think that's probably that's something, cool. something similar to what you're talking about. But they, I know they, sorry, go ahead. I taught a, I taught a class on internet literacy to uh, some school teachers. And I asked them, uh, if you have students who are interested in government, how many of you would send them to whitehouse.com? And they all agreed, raised their hands exactly. and said that White, they would. At that point in time, gov, it was an X-rated website. Yeah. Yeah, White House. Is, did Gov come after that? You to yeah. So the brain, the brain is the biggest best and filter to be honest, you've let's face got. It, sometimes WhiteHouse.gov let their country down a little bit because that is a look. Every variation of White House that you can get, get. Um, you know, maybe even look at when somebody bought that domain. You know, have the have the yeah, they should have Charles, let claim it. And so, okay, look, no, this is not this isn't the, the kind of thing that we want associated with this. You're obviously trying to get in a lot of type in traffic, not good. Um, I can't believe we don't have anyone jumping in. Don't be I know, I know. But they're, they're all being very, very polite today. I, I know. Think. I don't want to take the space that from anyone else. Look, jump in, jump out. It's all there. Um, it, it's parental guidance is parental guidance. The best way of doing it is to do it in person. Um, when you're not watching, it's the same as kids being in the house. And no matter how much you trust your kids, remember that your parents trusted you too and remember what you got up to. Mm -hmm. Putting your kid's computer out in a public area where they have yeah. have you watching yeah, them using it got all the, is really a good idea. Smartphones because are not allowed can, in their rooms. You room can answer the questions yeah. as they have them too. Uh, tablets are not allowed in their rooms after 8 p.m. Uh, they're, they're still, you know, 11 and, and 12 at the moment. Um, you know, and the, the computers in their room there is one computer that is allowed for some homework it's a really old one that, that's in the, the older stepdaughter's room but um, otherwise the main computers that they share are downstairs in the kitchen my sister got a phone call from her daughter's teacher when her daughter was in third grade <laughs> And the teacher said, please stop doing your uh, daughter's homework for her. And my sister said, are you asking why her homework was typed on the printer? Because 
She may be in third There's, grade, um, but she knows how to use a printer. Are geared around uh, being online tools, software as a service to help teachers set homework, share homework. The students can answer it online on the sites. The teacher can grade it all there, check everybody's is in. You know, there's a lot of apps now helping with, with homework, websites that, that basically are software as a service for education. I think that's, that's a great thing and a, a big step forward. Yeah, some of my kids. And I've been looking at some uh, online courses for things like machine learning. Some of my kids and have homework that good ones. Really has well to be done that way. And they they have an entire grade simply on how well they're able to navigate around a computer. Um, and they're and I'm talking about like kindergarten and first grade. And that like blew my mind. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got somebody who's the, the first time on, on Blab, Sultan. So uh, welcome to uh, to Blab. <laughs> so let's get Craig in here because you know what? We haven't talked about strawberries. And I think this is a pressing issue in, in uh, 2016. Um, so Craig, you've now got no excuse whatsoever. And it's not like you don't know about branding and stuff like that. So come on, in you come, Craigie. Um, come on, you know, find come a box on, to stand on so that you can reach the <laughs> Sometime I'm going to find my Hobbit shoes so that Craig doesn't have to feel like the only one because those are my favorite shoes in the whole wide world. But they really do look like Hobbit shoes. Like if a Hobbit were going to have Hobbit shoes, these would be the ones. <laughs> Everybody went. No, we won't. Come on. If they haven't left yet with me here in the seat, they will not leave with you coming in. <laughs> exactly. So let me yeah, quickly pull up a, a question that we did have earlier um, before we, we get on to the strawberries topic. Uh, questions on tools. What tools combination would you use to capture recent serps, especially on mobile? Perfect question. And you know what? It's your eyes. That's mm. the best tool any time um, and ask a few friends to, to go and look and even get screenshots. There's a lot of tools out there that can help, but the tools have their own uh, IPs. And if somebody wanted to, if they try and counter localization and personalization, you end up with a SERP that nobody would get because nobody normal turns off their personal mm -hmm. And localization has um, gotten the, harder the to capture. In the last literally six, seven years, is no two people should get exactly the same SERP uh, for most of the searches they do. Um, I'd, I'd say, you know, 95% of the searches, that top 10, just in 10 sites at the top, there's going to be at least one difference for personalization. The um, YouTube video that it will pull in may be different for different people depending on which ones you've looked at. The personalized results certainly that you were seeing from, we're seeing less of it now, but you know, if, if somebody on G Plus uh, had posted something about uh, this topic that you were searching for, that post would almost certainly be in your top 10 results. And that's going to depend on your follower list. There are so many different databases mm -hmm. that pulling in some of those are very personal to you so any tool that captures what it's seeing isn't going to capture what you see or what any other real person sees only what that tool sees and it's going to be influenced by its search history the more different sites that tool is looking at the more various and obscure history it's got you know this is a search that does twenty thousand searches per hour and never clicks the result mm -hmm. That's the, the personalization it's going to get. And, and Google's personalization is uh, taking new forms. One of the most recent I'd seen was where they're uh, collecting media consumption history from you about movies you've watched, videos you've listened to, things like that. And as you're uh, performing searches, they'll do a, a entity analysis on the query that you perform and see if it has anything to do with your media consumption history. So you're watching a, a, a 
Billy Joel commercial. Uh, Billy Joel, you're doing a search involving Billy Joel, and uh, uh, Google may say you watched a movie with him in it three months ago on this date. That may be part of your search results. We don't know how much. You know, they're collecting that they type of information. How much they'd like to collect mm -hmm. in the future. Certainly, a lot of you know, one of the things we always say is a lot of patents are speculative. Um, there's a lot of things that look, you know you're onto something, you can't use it yet, but you still patent it to prevent anybody else, you know, getting ahead of you on something you've already thought of. You protect the intellectual property. Um, exactly. So. If you're going to do the work and the research, yeah, you do. See a patent doesn't mean the search engine is using this, it doesn't even mean they ever use this. It, some of them are definitely things that they would like to use and can't yet and are hoping that at some time some derivative of this idea or that technology will advance and they'll be able to use it so there are certainly times like that and there are times where it's something they did use for a while but by the time the patent mm -hmm. is granted which is sometimes a, a good long time after they've stopped using it right there is one that i saw on audio watermarking where they said they might uh listen in to the ambient noise in the background uh just certain commercials on tv and they might grab an audio watermark a high-pitched sound from that commercial as you're watching it to identify that you're watching that one and set a cookie to uh, uh associate you're watching a commercial with any shopping that you might do to see if you're Simply watching TV and all those different what applications you buy. It's already on the Android operating system with Netflix. Um, you know, you can click, like, they, they can see that all. It's quick. I mean, you, when you look at your app now, it's basically saying you like this or you might like this. Um, so machine learning is so powerful in the way that we're looking at it today. Whereas when we first started in the industry, it wasn't like this, guys. I mean, we were actually dealing with the links, you know, being the weight of everything else. But now it's focused a little bit more to what the visitor is going to engage in first, and then where are they going to go next, and then how do they actually adapt to the rest of the environment. It's certainly one of those things that everybody's got to – grapple with there's several smart tvs that were looking at your viewing history that have taken that feature away because um it wasn't really a great idea let's say that you know you're a happy family man but in the evening after everybody else has gone to bed maybe you watched a few things that you wouldn't want your kids finding on the most frequently watched you might not even want your wife finding it on the most frequently watched and this was a big issue. Um, and where people are sharing TVs as well, which most families are, the viewing by the in the daytime is probably by a different user to the viewing of you know a mid evening, which is everyone, and the late evening, which is less likely to yeah, you know all of these things kind of. You make a good point because even Netflix. I mean, you look at Netflix as a master a parent. Now I can actually watch what my kids are watching. And also, I can watch what I'm watching. But at the same time, as, as a parent, I can now moderate, okay, are they watching something that I accept or not accept? Um, yes, that's a violation of privacy, yes, mm -hmm. I believe. But that, as a parent, it, I, I'm above that portion because they're my children. When I do turn Netflix on, it does ask me who I am, and it shows some icon figures in the top of the screen. I get to click on one to choose, right? So they they are definitely capturing individuals. Uh, well, and you look attention, at the interest. You look at the same thing, um, Bill, with YouTube, for example. I mean, most of our kids, if they have an iPad or a tablet, whatever tablet they have. Where are they going to spend most of their time? It's going to be probably YouTube. You know, they're just going to kind of browse around to like, you know, Minecraft or all sorts of other things that they can get themselves into. But when the 
say a 13 or 14 year old starts to comment now what are you commenting on that's that brings me into a different subject and i won't go there first but as a parent you want to know what they're commenting we're always in social you know we we know what uh the goods and the negatives are social but as a child coming in i don't think they already they completely understand that Okay, so what do the letters mean next to your icons? Your yeah, images? I made you guys host because you know H is in front of three of ours. And a what is the G? I have no idea what the G is. Um, that's new to me. I have William? never seen that before. But I'm looking at a little circle icon in the top right hand corner or left hand corner. Yeah. For guest. Yep. Guest. Yeah, exactly. Not geek. Not Google geek. Guest. No, no. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, ghost, it knows that you're from uh, from Google Plus, and it figures if you're from a ghost, then you must be a ghost. Well, yeah. Far as I didn't update my avatar on this place on Twitter, so I don't think they know that I'm actually Google. You see, <laughs> I, I should be safe right now. You should be. You should be. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I, I think uh, I'm a Red Dwarf fan, so I've got a whole different meaning for what the H's mean. We're all holograms. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that's the background you have for the Christmas tree, which is beautiful, by the way. Yeah, I do try and uh, give us a, a Christmas flight. Uh, <laughs> I'll probably be doing uh, even more on our, our last show before Christmas on the 22nd, uh, which some people will be glad to know is, is back on Google Hangouts for the uh, full screen recording. Uh, more room for my ego in the in the film strip that one. Yeah, that was a funny comment. <laughs> um, okay, so. David asks, so will Google figure out if it's me that loves Lego or my son using my phone? And I'm not going to give the official answer on that. However, I want to give an observation. Um, yesterday, as I was doing OK Google, and I was trying to say, go to blab.im, it would not hear me. And it kept doing lab. You know, it, it would not do blab. And I had to spell it. But the person sitting next to me, tried the very same thing and it was like mm -mm, you're not our owner so i kind of thought that that was very interesting um sound search seems to have gotten very precise very precise train uh when you start to look at the new update for um uh, marshmallow you'll actually get a notification to start to train um, yeah i got that okay so when you train that, what I actually found uh, as a difficulty, I had other kids, my kids around in the background, and I was trying to train this thing. I actually pushed pause and said, do later, or uh, mm -hmm. come back later uh, for the message. But uh, otherwise, it gets confused. Because what it's looking for is your patterns from, especially from the watch right here. It's got like the uh, two uh, microphones with inside of it. So it's listening to the highest quality audio it's coming out of your voice at, at the wrist level and and you know with that i think there's a whole lot of different well there's a lot of different things i think we can do with that type of learning with voice and uh, Emin, i'm sure you've got some things on that one i had a client named uber like in under all uber uh, and they had a big office building. They, they were a co-working space. And when I searched for them on Google Maps, Google Maps tried to send me to the Hoover office building, which is FBI headquarters around D.C. And it, Uber it was is located like one near D.C. So, that was off, right? Yeah, and it's going to be a lot tougher. Uber and Uber. Uh -huh. to, you know, it has to build up context with us to, to be able to try and clear things up. Believe me, it's a lot harder when you've got a British accent. Uh, having seen the the joys of what YouTube um, will create for <laughs> possible <coughs> closed captions for my Hangouts, it, it is fantastic. Uh, literally one time I went through the first 10 minutes of a show and it hadn't got one word right. Not even the word show. Uh, 
welcome to the show was was something like wheel grit in a shoe i mean it was it was ridiculous how bad it was there's an entire team working on that which is incredible because i've got a lot of friends from the uk as well and basically it's hard because the in other languages as well it's being able to pronounce the tongue and then how those two speakers on the watch uh pick that up or even on the phone the nexus 5x or the nexus uh, 6p for example you know those have got this uh, really superior um microphones not only that but processor speed and then they're connected with the newest version of the android Mo uh, marshmallow so you know with the combination of those updates that are coming out each month you know that's that's going to come i think uh to be something that's normal for us that once they can figure out how to to match that that speech pattern it's going to be incredible from there on i, I think they just don't like your there. dialect Ammon. sorry i just need to finish Possibly that, yes. <laughs> no, they, they did. You were talking about patents before, and sometimes they don't do things that they talk about in patents, but they do have a patent where they talk about using yeah. accents as an extra signal. For, for and they might personalize while, based you, upon you that signal. One of the things I, I used so, to tease Carlos or de Susie uh, for, because some of the signals they might use is. is your name your name can give away what part of the world you're from um so if it wasn't quite sure of an accent it might be able to tell from your name which accent it was more likely to be um but carlos is is great because carlos fernandez is mm. his name he's from manchester in the uk and he's living in los angeles at, at that time he's, he's now in texas so um yeah It'd be lovely to see what it's trying to work out with <laughs> what it should serve as, as he's localized. Carlos is great. I'm glad you brought him up because that his accent's very. Um, sometimes you you miss what he's trying to say based on his accent, but I think that's a good challenge for Google too. It's not a small place, Manchester. So um, you know, it, it's what I think the fifth biggest city uh, could even be higher than that. So. You know, it, it's quite a big one. It's right next to Liverpool, where the Beatles are from. Um, and we've got a, a major soap opera set with that accent, uh, which is uh, Coronation Street. It uses the Manchester accent. It's 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 a big place. Um, but yes, it's a tough accent for people. And then, you know, very close to it, we've got, you know, Birmingham. Birmingham accent is like that. <laughs> I'm gonna jump out. I'm gonna jump out because we don't have a lot much much more time. But uh, it was a pleasure hanging out with you guys. Uh, thanks to the group and the audience and stuff. I was gonna go back into the comments, but again, pleasure hanging out with you guys. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we've got somebody mm -hmm. asking what happened to your your painting, Bill. Uh, have you had a, a localized earthquake? Uh, either your room has tipped or your painting has. What's it? Just behind you. Either your room has tipped. My room is what? Painting has. Oh, yeah. Oh, I see that. <laughs> no, the painting it's is the fine. The I'm not sure why <laughs> it's showing the angle like that. It's the. Well, we were. Be aware. Uh, uh, I'm going to go back to well, we were, we David a little okay. earlier. Uh, who said, Why do I rank differently locally for web design East Hampton MA versus East Hampton MA web design uh, versus just doing web design when he's in East Hampton MA? And it's a great question. There is a difference. Uh, I know that. For you, there, there may not be, but there actually is. And it's partly because of the way people tend to refine searches. Um, the words at the start are often the first search they did, and then they add in more words. So a lot of searches, the later on a, a word comes, the more important a refinement it should be. Definitely the first thing is the main subject, but it should definitely be an and these words. Um, whereas when you get a long query, sometimes all at once, or it starts with a location, all you're asking for is, is local results rather than really trying to refine it as only local results. Um, 
East Hampton MA Web Design could be any firm that's done web design for East Hampton, whereas Web Design East Hampton MA is more likely to be that you started with web design and wanted only somebody in East Hampton MA, and of course, local search when you're just doing uh, East Hampton, uh, just doing web, web design when you're in East Hampton, that's that's always in there. The localization effect is you know, how much it thinks it's important to you. Let me bring in a, a variation of that. Sometimes it's possible that Google may be trying to uh, base the results of your query upon uh, synonyms, but also upon knowledge base. Uh, similarities between uh, your synonyms. So if uh, the query is similar to one that includes city name and then subject, Google may say that's possibly similar to this other city name and same subject. So let's uh, see what that shows in terms of our uh, log files from our queries and use that information, search histories from uh, searches performed by other people and uh, provide you with uh, some alternative results based yep. on those. Uh, as, as you probably noticed, we've got you in the, in the audience. Uh, first time on Blab, welcome to, to Blab John. Um, oh my god, this has been like my dream. I told like people, I really, really like if there's one person I want to get in here and I'm I'm seriously like crying. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, for goodness sake, people, never ever get Mark Zuckerberg on here or Christine will die. <laughs> oh no, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's it's a fun format, John. Um, one of the things we do like about it is how the the text is right there and it, it keeps up. But uh, as we started this hangout with, you know, I'm not a big fan of the video format. It it works for what it works for. It's a different format. Um, I just think that there is more versatility with hangouts than there is with this. That's it. Um, but the conversation can be very very good for involving hundreds of people in, in the side chat. <laughs> oh my goodness. No, I don't dream of that. Really I dream cool of you. John Mueller joining Blab with us. <laughs> I didn't know if he would even be able to. If he, I didn't know, like, because I didn't, you know, like the different restrictions and stuff. Like, I don't know. But it's really cool. No pressure. <laughs> um. You may have to yeah. fill out a form in triplicate before he's allowed mm. to join. So, hopefully, <laughs> David, uh, I think you, you possibly reach a certain point ah. where you don't have to do that anymore. Now, this is something, I don't know if you, you saw it, but um, PFR earlier was sharing uh, some stuff on some of the formats that are, are very rarely used but enable a kind of direct connection between the server and browser for apps and keeping a connection open. It's kind of like doing peer-to-peer -peer networking through the web um, on demand. It's a cross between what the web currently does and being able to stream multimedia and do a sort of very, very um, interactive connection. So if you haven't seen Pierre Farr's stuff uh, recently, go and look at his recent stream. There's sort of great resources on there which Google have said that they're doing more with and they've got some great resources already. Uh, David, I hope that, that we, we got to kind of answer the question on local, but if, if you've still got questions on it, jump on in. Um, or or um, we can try and get John on to see what, uh, what he says about it. Pierre has but, really good um, music lists too. <laughs> like really fun music lists. I discovered that. And he likes talking about them. We never chatted yes. before, but we were chatting in his stream. <laughs> that was the, the rank time. Yeah. Music, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very fun. Um, so 
how are we we are actually on our time we have reached uh 10 past nine in the uk and uh how can we possibly end it <laughs> okay no pressure john but um it's now or never <laughs> am is ready to call the curtains <laughs> Well, I think it's it's the the thing that we always do. We stop the recording here, and and the rest is for those who uh, were here at the time. All right, that that sounds good, and that might actually be better. Anyways, is that like a yeah. Yeah, simulation of a green room? You know, we still get the uh, we still get the chat going on. It's just the, the just off the going. record. I often wait till people um, switch to off the record to jump in. Oh. All right, so uh -huh. shall I pass? Hey, Tim, to join in. Yeah. Okay. Was it? And uh, okay. that's the end of this show. Uh, we'll see everyone for our Christmas show next next week over on G Plus. But we'll carry on talking here off the record. <laughs>